working together now that you have admitted your compulsion to control everything and everyone. Oh, well, I think that you just skipped over half that statement. I did say that you were exactly the same way. Ah, oh, well, you were not supposed to point that out. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That won't happen again. <laughs> Erica, I admit my compulsion freely. I just do things better than most people, and I just can't understand why I'm not in charge of everything. Well, I know how you feel. I mean, if people would just do what I told them to do, everything would be so simple. You see, we do have something in common. If people would just do what we want them to do. But they never learn. <laughs> and I know you're supposed to feel guilty. It's supposed to be a failing. I mean, it's supposed to be just this control freak thing. But frankly, I don't think it's such a bad thing. Well, maybe it's not control. Maybe it's uh, a need, a love. That's right. That's why this whole thing with Adam is so maddening. He wants to control you. I'm not afraid of him. I mean, I'm not intimidated by his mind. <laughs> There's no reason that you should be. It's just that uh, he... What? Well, he'll do anything. I mean, he'll even use my little girl against me. And I tell you, sometimes during the course of the last month or so, I really, I felt like screaming. I know what you think of me. Maybe, maybe not. I know that I have certain attributes that some people might think of as, uh, might not think of as saintly. No. But Bianca, Bianca is the best thing in my life. My love for her, she makes me good. And that love I have for her, that is the best thing I've ever done in my life. And Adam knows that. And Adam just takes that love I have for my little girl and, and for him to try to use it against me. Erica. I understand. When... Helga wheeled Angelique into that room with all the people watching. All of a sudden, Angelique became I don't know, some sort of a, a pond in a, a French forest or a, a gothic romance. She wasn't a person, not someone I knew, not someone I cared about. I, I could have, I could have killed Helga that night. I loved Angelique. And to have her mother use her to her own ends. This is like Adam using Bianca. Yes. Well, I may want to control everything, but I don't always get what I want. Well, I mean, I know that you can't always have what you want. Oh, sometimes I do feel just like throwing in the towel and then giving up. Oh, liar. Oh, that's a nice thing to say. Oh, no, it's truthful. You'd never quit. I, I've seen your track record. I've seen you in action. Well, you never quit either. No. No, and I don't even have a choice. I don't know what it is about me, but I keep going on. I keep pushing forward. Well, I know how you feel. I mean, I feel that way, too. I just have this thing in me. I mean, sometimes I just feel driven. I... Excuse me. I, I don't know what's come over me. Yes, I, I, I haven't offered you more coffee. Would you I, like more coffee? I would, but I really do think it is late. Yes, it is. I, I'm sorry. I guess I just got to talking. No, no, we both got to talking. Well, I'll get your coat. Uh, Erica, I didn't bring a coat. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, Look, I would love... Uh, I'd just take this moment to thank you for dinner, cognac conversation. My pleasure. Uh, well, should I uh, pick you up in the morning? Oh, well, that would be lovely. Yes. Well, good. Then. <laughs> good night. Good night. Right into the meat of the meal. Ah, and uh, today Erica and I are the main course. 
That just suits me fine. <laughs> Five, four, three. Good evening. This is Roger Brown for Market Street Week. Tonight we query Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Wolf. Our guests are Erica Kane, founder and chief executive officer of Enchantment Cosmetics, and Dimitri Mary, the corporate animal who recently almost gobbled her business in a takeover attempt. Thank you both for coming here. Oh, it's always a great pleasure. Man. I wouldn't have missed it. <laughs> My first question is for you, Ms. Kane. Now that Dimitri Merrick has a seat on your board, are you living in fear? Well, my goodness, not at all. No, I'm not living in fear. I think it's wonderful having the big bad wolf on my side. <laughs> no, I'm not living in fear at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's, it's really terrific having a man of Mr. Merrick's vast experience show an interest in the future of my firm. And about your own uh, future, do you foresee a time when the big bad wolf might abscond with your basket of goodies? <laughs> Honestly, Roger, I really do think that uh, Mr. Merrick is not interested in absconding anymore. I think he has found the rewards of teamwork. Oh, and what do you say to that, Mr. Merrick? Is the big bad wolf really ready for team tag and patty cake? Let me say this. In the brief time that Miss Kane and I have worked together, it's become clear to me that we do have a lot in common. You see, Roger, cooperation is working for us. Or is it a matter of out-and-out -out capitulation? Well, now, Roger, I think you know me well enough to know that uh, capitulation is not my style. Well, I know that your business style has, has always been, uh, don't get mad, get even. No, my business style is adaptable. I always adopt to whatever will help my company at the time, that point in time, and I continue to be like that as long as I'm in charge. Well, I guess that's my basic question. How long will that be? Are you in charge now? And uh, if so, do you fear becoming a figurehead? Of course I'm in charge. What do you say to that, Mr. Merrick? Who's really in the driver's seat? Tell me you lost your way to the Clinton Ramble. I had to come. How am I supposed to take this? I talked to Jeremy. He's worried about you, and so am I. He'd think with all that Zen philosophy, he'd learn to keep his mouth shut, but no. I I'm very glad he told me. Trevor, if you're in trouble... No, I'm not in trouble. I'm, I'm just late for an appointment. She's both car and driver. And you're just along for the ride. Well, so far, the ride's been thrilling, not to mention the uh, inspiring profits. Hmm. Well, if you have nothing to contribute to the company, why did you try to take over in the first place? Just for the fun of it? Mr. Merrick has a great deal to contribute. He's a valuable member of the board with a wealth of wonderful ideas. So you two are just going to ride off into the business sunset, uh, cooperating all the way, huh? No grabs for power, no squabbling over who has the final say. Is that it? Well, now, Roger, let me offer you an analogy since you are so fond of them. This morning, Dimitri drove us both in in his sports car. And it was wonderful. I had a great time. I did not fear for my safety at all because Dimitri is great behind the wheel. He is smooth and self-assured and uh, downright masterful. Oh, thank you very much, Erica. <laughs> and on the way home, I'm sure that Dimitri will have no problem whatsoever handing his car over to me. Because he trusts my driving ability as much as I trust him. Hmm. What do you say to that, Mr. Merrick? Can you sit back while she takes the wheel? Of course. Be my guest. There, you see. That's how we're running enchantment. We're taking turns, and we're trusting each other. Mm, an intriguing idea. Yeah. We'll pursue it right after we take a break. <laughs> and we're clear. Oh, you two are good. You should be out selling uh, U.S. savings bonds. You, know? you are a very convincing duo. You've almost got me convinced. Almost. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll take a breather, and then we'll come back and tape another segment, okay, with you? That's just fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I must say, you are even better in front of the camera than you are behind the wheel. Oh, well, maybe you shouldn't compliment me until the show is. It could uh, be bad luck. Oh, no, no such thing. I think I need a drink of water. <laughs> right over there. Thanks. 
good to see you again. Yes. I'm sorry we couldn't speak before the show. It's all right. I think it's going so well, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And you were right about Merrick. He's good. Mm -hmm. It was a heck of an idea you had about putting him on the show, too. I'm just glad I could pull it off for you. Okay, so why don't you tell me this news that I just have to give? Just sit there and bite your lip and don't say what it is you have to say. I have nothing to say. No, of course not. A grown man might express his displeasure by having arranged this interview, but a spoiled prince such as yourself, no, 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 you just sit there and pout. I do not pout. Pouting is your domain. When have I ever pouted? Adam makes me so unhappy. He uses my soft-hearted maternal nature against me. I was being totally sincere. Oh, please, you were playing the helpless heroine. Well, you know what? I'll play anything I have to to fight off a predator like you. Yeah, right. It was uh, pathetically obvious from the start. I should have called you on it, but I found it rather amusing watching you try to enlist my sympathy. Oh, really? And what about the poor old Helga's sweet little Angelique thing? I mean, yeah, well, I, I, I will certainly sympathy? not use that again. Well, you were wasting your time anyhow because it's Angelique. I feel sorry for you. You have no idea what you're talking about. Well, you never loved her. She's nothing to you. And if she hadn't been in a coma for the last 15 years, she would have figured that out. Look, and I refuse to discuss Angelique with you. And the poor woman, she's so deluded. She thinks that you're worth loving. It's a shame Helga didn't just wheel her right into a truck stop instead of your engagement party. You are a pawn. Because then she would have met a man worth his salt. And you, you'd be married to that subhuman Natalie. See, that's the kind of woman you deserve. Let me just sum it up for you, nice and clear. You huh? don't have to tell I me anything. I didn't kill Will. Forever you and me After all You want to be flattened by a truck? Do it on someone else's liability insurance. Oh, cold to the quick! You know, one of your least attractive uh, qualities is how you take every argument and turn it into a low personal blow. Oh, I see. And you always fight like a gentleman. Oh, so far I have, but I am ready to take the gloves off. Oh, now I'm really petrified. You are so contemptuous of my personal life. Let me tell you what I think of yours. I haven't the least interest to know what you think of mine. You think I'm cold. Now that is laughable because you are the original ice maiden. I am tough. I admit I'm tough. No, no, no. You're hard. You're cunning and calculating. I mean, if, you, if you had a real emotion, it would just yank you right by the hair. Oh, I see. But I bet you'd, you'd recognize the real emotion, wouldn't you? you have turned your husband into a little trained monkey that uh, his only love in life is to do your bidding? Oh, boy, you know... See, there you are. Husband? It just shows your ignorance. Adam is not my husband in any sense of the word. Yeah, well, that is the point, isn't it? I mean, you wouldn't be interested in a real relationship with him or with anyone else, for that matter. How dare you presume what I would what, be... When anything goes wrong for you, you just toss the blame over to Adam's corner. Besides, he's a fine excuse for you to do exactly what you want to do. You have no Which idea what I want to do. live your life exclusively for yourself without regard for anyone else. He makes a, a fine excuse for you to do exactly what you want to do. You have no idea Which what is I want to do. Which is live your life exactly as you want without any regard for anyone else. You couldn't handle a real man. Not in your life or home.
That was a very nice try, Dimitri. That was a very nice try. But it won't work. Oh, what won't? Are you, uh, are you saying that this totally spontaneous event was a ploy? Of course it was a ploy. And it was totally transparent. It was, it was beneath you. Really? Yes. <laughs> In what way? Oh, please. May I say that whatever it was, you responded rather completely? Well, I thought you knew that about me. I never do anything halfway. So, I mean, it wasn't a very nice kiss, as far as kisses go, but it was only a kiss. Well, a rather uh, unexpected kiss. No, actually, it was quite predictable. Every man who spends time with me tries to kiss me sooner or later, usually sooner. <laughs> it had no significance. No, none whatsoever. Not business and not pleasure. From this totally spontaneous event, you should assume nothing. Well, I wouldn't dream of assuming anything, Erica. So, uh, you gonna hitchhike back to Pine Valley? We have wasted enough time. <clears throat> Fascinating. What? Well, I mean, it was a nice kiss. It was very nice, but... You said that first. You feel that way too? Exactly. Well, good. Now that we've got that settled, we can move on. Mm hmm. You're still in the driver's seat. Oh, I'm glad we both understand that. Well, we understand everything. been very quiet up until now. But I've done a lot of thinking about everything that's happened lately, Dimitri. Too much fighting, too much arguing. And we've both used extremely personal issues to provoke each other. Yes. Angelique and Bianca. Extremely sensitive subjects. Look, over the last 24 hours... Everything has just taken so much energy from me. It's taken so much of my effort, and it's just left me exhausted and needing, how shall I say this, to come clean with you, maybe? To level with you. That would be a switch. You know my marriage to Adam is a living hell. And yes, the coping devices that I have adapted, the ploys, as you choose to call them, including that interview I set up with Roger Brown in the city today for us, was all for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to preserve and protect what is mine, enchantment. If your marriage is bad, why? Because if I divorce Adam, then he will take revenge. And I don't mean just ordinary, everyday revenge, like ruining my credit or my reputation. I mean Adam Chandler revenge. He's threatening to oust you as CEO by voting his stock with me. He thinks. I had to forge an alliance. With me? Our major stockholder. You see, I told you I was coming clean. Well, what other choice do I have? I guess I might as well lay all the rest of my cards on the table. Look, over the last 24 hours, I have arranged for us to be together as much as possible. I see. To win me over. To prove that once and for all, I am the best able to be the CEO of Enchantment. Enchantment is my dream. It's my vision, and I really am the best one to lead it. And by the way, thank you. I mean, thank you for complimenting me the way you did on the air today. You're welcome. Have I succeeded? Well, you have a burning determination to hold on to what you think of as yours. 
what is mine. Look. Last night you said that I never quit. And you were right. That's all I want to say. Oh, except one more thing. I do appreciate the situation you're in with your wife. And I do sympathize. I meant that. Thank you, Erica. I hope Angelique recovers quickly. Bye. Very good, Angelique. I'm not asking for friendship, Dimitri. But... A promise to keep the line of communication open would suffice. You just do not know when to quit, do you? Yes, another reason that I'm very valuable. Should the leadership situation deteriorate even further, I might be willing to vote my shares with you. You have got to be kidding. I'm dead serious. I am not. On your side, Adam, and I never have been. And no amount of Erica bashing or plotting will change that. Are you on Erica's side? Uh, what is it, Sabrina? Miss Kane is here. There's a rumor that the Enchantment Board was convening a very impromptu meeting here. But as usual, it appears that Adam is holding someone hostage. Well, Adam was just about to leave. Let's all just keep our cool, shall we? You're not allowed to convene a meeting without consulting me. Did you consult me about your appearance on Market Street Week? He's trying to woo you to his side. Oh, Erica, be careful. Your insecurities are showing. Oh, shut up. Has he succeeded? <sighs> we were just simply discussing future policy. Yes, I'm quite sure you were. Well, anything he said about me, of course, Dimitri, is a lie. I hate you. Oh, Erica. No, 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 no. Uh, I've had enough of this. Yes, so have I. I am sick of your schemes and your maneuvering, and I frankly have had it up to here with Not your threats, sweet, Adam. Sweetheart, you're hyperventilating. Uh, look, look uh, didn't anyone ever teach you how to treat a lady, Adam? <laughs> that woman is no lady. That's, that's my wife. <laughs> well, then try showing a little respect and stop attacking. Thank you. Oh, how touching. I mean, selling your wife out is low, but assassinating her character at the same time? I mean, you have no conscience, Chandler, no ethics. Ooh, bravo, bravo. That's, that's a line and sinker, but isn't she something? Oh, and you've totally misconstrued my take on my wife. I adore her. I, I respect her more than any other woman alive. I couldn't possibly assassinate that character. It's too strong. She's too unique. He's insane. Oh. Erica, please, let's call a moratorium and accusations and all pledge to rise above past mistakes. Look, I apologize for Adam. I mean, obviously, he is too ill to apologize for himself. <laughs> rise above past mistakes. Do I look like I just fell off a turnip truck? Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait a second here. This, this haggling should be done in the privacy of your own home. Yes, of course it should. You're right. And once again, I apologize. So, this meeting is adjourned. on Good Friday. Man, even if it rained, he was still out there. And then even if it snowed. Well, anyway, look, before I lay you down for your nap, I'm going to take your blood pressure, okay? You're a snob, Angelique. I am not. I didn't inherit millions of dollars. My old man's a gardener. I don't care. You care plenty. That's why you don't love me. I love Dimitri. You love his money. I'm the one you really love. Keep your hands off of her. Dimitri. I told you to stay away from her. I don't take orders from you, Merrick. Please don't fight. She's only with you because you're rich. No, she's with me because she belongs with me. And I told you if you come near her again, I will make you sorry. Do you want to... What 
heard there was a crisis. Oh, I see. Do spies have their ears to the ground? Oh, the traitor, Joan. Does she the one who calls you? She's neither a traitor nor a spy, but she does keep me informed. Oh, yeah. how typical. Oh, look, look, look. I didn't come here to make trouble. Oh, just to gloat? No, to help if I can. Oh, I see. Well, not necessary. I have everything in hand. Yes, um, so I see. Mm -hmm. Look, don't go, please. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have taken it out on you. This has been one long and very lousy day, but if it weren't for your vote, I wouldn't still even be head of enchantment. <laughs> well, perhaps, uh, at this moment I should... You would have liked me to vote the other way? Uh, no, 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 never. No matter how many problems come down on me to handle, I do want to be the one to handle them. So, I would like your help. All right. What, uh, what's the story? All right, well, to begin with, uh, this major shipment that was supposed to go to Consolidated never got there. That's unbelievable. Yes, it is. And so we've been trying to track down the error and find out if the shipment is just lost out there or if it is indeed in another warehouse. Oh, that amount of product is worth millions. Absolutely. Yes, it is. So the immediate problem is to try to find the computer codes to the warehouses. Uh-huh. Okay, under what file would that be? Ah, that's the mystery because Rose has a very unique form of filing. <laughs> so I see. Uh, yes, I had a secretary like Rose once myself. Everything was very conceptual. Well, let me, let me see if I can try to think like Rose. Computer codes, warehouses, shipping, tracking. How about we try law? Very good. 